Introduction to the State and Revolution. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dessaline. The State and Revolution. The Marxist Theory of the State and the Tasks of the Proletariat in the Revolution by Vladimir Lenin Written in August to September, 1917 First published in 1918 A note from the Lenin Internet Archive Lenin wrote The State and Revolution in August and September, 1917, when he was hiding from persecution from the provisional government. The need for such a theoretical work as this was mentioned by Lenin in the second half of 1916. It was then that he wrote his note on the Youth International, in which he criticized B. Karn's position on the question of the state, and promised to write a detailed article on what he thought to be the Marxist attitude to the state. In a letter to A. M. Kollontai on February 17, 1917, he said that he had almost got ready material on that question. This material was written in a small blue-covered notebook headed Marxism on the State. In it, Lenin had collected quotations from the works of Marx and Engels, and extracts from the books by Kautsky, Panikek, and Bernstein, with his own critical notes, conclusions, and generalizations. When Lenin left Switzerland for Russia in April 1917, he feared arrest by the provisional government and left the manuscript of Marxism on the state behind, as it would have been destroyed had he been caught. When in hiding after the July events, Lenin wrote in a note, Entre nous, if I am kicked off, I ask you to publish my notebook, Marxism on the State. It got held up in Stockholm. It is bound in a blue cover. All the quotations from Marx and Engels are collected there, all those from Kautsky against Panikek. There are a number of remarks, notes, and formulas. I think a week's work would be enough to publish it. I consider it important because not only Plekhanov, but Kautsky too, is confused. When Lenin received his notebook from Stockholm, he used the material he had collected as a basis for his book, The State and Revolution. According to Lenin's plan, The State and Revolution was to have consisted of seven chapters, but he did not write the seventh, the experience of the Russian revolutions of 1905 and 1917, and only a detailed plan has remained. In a note to the publisher, Lenin wrote that if he was too slow in completing this, the seventh chapter, or should it turn out to be too bulky, the first six chapters should be published separately as book one. Originally, the name F.F. F. Ivanovsky is shown on the first page of the notebook manuscript as that of the author. Lenin intended to publish the book under that pseudonym, otherwise the provisional government would have confiscated it for his name alone. The book, however, was not printed until 1918, when there was no longer any need for the pseudonym. The second edition appeared in 1919. In this revision, Lenin added to Chapter 2 a new section, The Presentation of the Question by Marx in 1852. End of the note by Lenin Internet Archive Preface to the First Edition the question of the state is now acquiring particular importance, both in theory and in practical politics. The imperialist war has immensely accelerated and intensified the process of transformation of monopoly capitalism into state monopoly capitalism. The monstrous oppression of the working people by the state, which is merging more and more with the all-powerful capitalist associations, is becoming increasingly monstrous. The advanced countries, we mean their hinterland, are becoming military convict prisons for the workers. The unprecedented horrors and miseries of the protracted war 
are making the people's position unbearable and increasing their anger. The world proletarian revolution is clearly maturing. The question of its relation to the state is acquiring practical importance. The elements of opportunism that accumulated over the decades of comparatively peaceful development have given rise to the trend of social chauvinism which dominated the official socialist parties throughout the world. This trend, socialism in words and chauvinism in deeds, Plekhanov, Potrasov, Brekovskaya, Rubanovich, and, in a slightly veiled form, Tseratelli, Chernov and company in Russia, Scheidemann, Lejean, David and others in Germany, Renaudel, Gesda, and Vandervelde in France and Belgium, Hindman and the Fabians in England, etc., etc., is conspicuous for the base, servile adaptation of the leaders of socialism to the interest not only of their national bourgeoisie, but of their state, for the majority of the so-called great powers have long been exploiting and enslaving a whole number of small and weak nations. And the imperialist war is a war for the division and redivision of this kind of booty. The struggle to free the working people from the influence of the bourgeoisie in general, and of the imperialist bourgeoisie in particular, is impossible without a struggle against opportunist prejudices concerning the state. First of all, we examine the theory of Marx and Engels of the state, and dwell in particular detail on those aspects of this theory which are ignored or have been distorted by the opportunists. Then we deal specially with the one who is chiefly responsible for these distortions, Karl Kautsky, the best-known leader of the Second International, from 1889 to 1914, which has met with such miserable bankruptcy in the present war. Lastly, we sum up the main results of the experience of the Russian revolutions of 1905, and particularly of 1917. Apparently, the latter is now, early August 1917, completing the first stage of its development. But this revolution as a whole can only be understood as a link in a chain of socialist proletarian revolutions being caused by the imperialist war. The question of the relation of the socialist proletarian revolution to the state, therefore, is acquiring not only practical political importance, but also the significance of a most urgent problem of the day, the problem of explaining to the masses what they will have to do before long to free themselves from capitalist tyranny. The author, August 1917. End of preface to the first edition. Preface to the Second Edition The present second edition is published virtually unaltered, except that Section 3 has been added to Chapter 2. The author, from Moscow, December 17, 1918. End of Introduction